Praise the Lord. God bless you, saints. I'm your sister, Kelly, and you are the remnant rising. The Lord is saying it's time to walk in big faith. When God does something new, it is you who must take hold of that something new. It's time for your complaints and your worries and your fears and your doubts to be obliterated by the freedom that Jesus Christ came to bring you over 2,000 years ago. Freedom is at stake in this decrepit world. Your freedom cannot be found on this earth or in anything it has to offer. Your freedom does not come by anything created. Your freedom comes from the creator himself. You were born to experience this particular freedom because God decided that's how he wanted your life to go. You are truly blessed and highly favored even on your worst day. God wants you to live above your means. You were born into a dead nature, but by your faith, you are filled with the life that only God can give you. The blood of Jesus Christ is your destiny. It is your great honor. It is your great responsibility to take hold of that life and that freedom right now. Your tomorrow is not promised and the quality of the rest of your entire life on this earth, it's predicated on whether or not you're willing to walk in that new divine nature. Don't fall by the wayside of turning aside to Mabel's, <laughs> fables, myths, distractions, false powerless gospels and teachings, traditions of men, vanities, idol worship, vain religion, your feelings, your past, who you were, what they did, enemy intimidation, lies of the flesh. All that is a distraction, no matter how real it may seem or how it tries to press on you. Rebuke it in Jesus' name. If you would radically loosen your grip on who you were and what they did, and even where you are, if you don't like it, and how you feel if it doesn't feel good, if you would loosen your grip, then you would be making yourself available to take hold of the abundant life Jesus came to give you. John 10.10, 10, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So many feel less than, not understanding their spirit is being robbed and killed and destroyed daily, manifesting on earth as all those heavy feelings. When you refuse to take hold of your faith by every word of God, it is time to take a sharp turn away from complacency and away from your idea of how these spiritual things should be done. If it doesn't align with the actual examples of scripture, Allow yourself to be wrong, repent, and get on the narrow road of freedom and the perfect abundance and presence of the good Lord. Even Job in his suffering prior to coming to an understanding as he spoke with God was lamenting in his flesh as we all have before. It wasn't until Job really sought the Lord that the Lord gave him revelation. And then Job's attitude shifted. And we see that in Job chapter 42 and verse 5. I've often referenced this verse so powerful. Job says to God, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. That's a shift. That's, this is the first day of the rest of my life type of shift. He didn't actually mean he was seeing God what he meant was that now he could see God at work in his suffering. He could see God's outstretched hand over his situation, over his very life. He was saying that now he could see God's presence as provision available for his comfort, available for all things. This is eyes to see, saints. And the Lord wants to bring you into this dimension. If you're not here already, and if you are here already, Teach others about this freedom, this abundant life that the Lord came to bring them in. This is the foundation of Christ. There be no building, there be no gifts or ministries, and not at least not from the Lord, until you build upon that freedom that the Lord first came to bring you. 
I say it like that if you haven't gotten there yet because it is very much a destination. It's like a level on the mountain of the Lord. Because no matter how circumstance is seen, you are his. I said you are his and he cannot fail. So you go higher and higher on this walk in understanding, in faith, in obedience. And the higher you go, you go away from the death, away from what was, away from who you were. You must let who you were go, for they no longer live, but only Christ through you. Becoming more Christ-like and reveling in the knowledge that your king has chosen you to bring others into the same light and the same freedom. I know that's hard to believe, but it's high time that you rebuke that flesh, even if it doesn't understand, and just say, okay, Lord, you chose me. It's time to approach life in God's new, higher, and better ways as taught to you by his Holy Spirit. This is available to every saint. Do not disqualify yourself. Do not listen to the liar. Do not listen to your flesh if it disagrees with any word of God. We are not prepared to walk as sheep amidst the wolves until we first walk alone with Jesus. This is where the saints have been for so long, alone with the Lord. And inevitably, there comes a time where you're no longer a spiritual child. But now you have become, and it truly is no longer you who live, but now Christ lives through you. Repeat those words to yourself. Meditate on that scripture because it's been coming through for several weeks now. Hallelujah. It is no longer I who live, but Christ through me. Sit with that, saints. Whatever and whoever can still trigger you is an indication of an area of your life or your mind that you've not let the Lord into yet. Now, saints, don't argue with that and say, oh, I've let him in. But what? God hasn't healed you from that yet? Does that sound likely? If he's dealing with you, he gives you peace. That's why the joy of the Lord is our strength. Give him everything. Give him all of it. He wants you to move forward and not focus on what was. Radically allow yourself to forget everything that is dead. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is always freedom. Do not hold on to death or what was. God's promise to you is that when you forsake that menial fig leaf, your royal attire awaits. To refer to yourself in the past tense, how things were, how I was, how I felt, what they did, it's all death. That old wineskin must be allowed to finally fall away. You're now men and women of the Most High God, covered by the blood of the only King, the only Messiah, the only Chosen One, Jesus, your Christ. It is your turn to take hold of and own this new divine nature, for it has been gifted to you by the sweet and precious blood of your Messiah. Two scriptures for you, saints. Philippians 3 and 12. Not that I have already attained or am already perfected, but I press on that I may lay hold of that for which Christ Jesus has also laid hold of me. The Lord has taken hold of you. Take hold of him back and look for the evidences. We're so quick to say, I believe Jesus is Lord, but then we sit in our flesh. It's time to rise above that. 1 Timothy 6 and 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, which begins today. To which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Saints, we're all here because we believe that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. We have heard that the Lord is God. We have come to believe that his word is true. 
now it is time for you to see with those spiritual eyes, some of you for the first time, and the evidence that you are truly seeing God's hand on your life that, hey, I really am called and chosen. Hey, I'm ready to walk in that abundant divine nature. The evidence that you're really doing it is freedom, unlimited freedom, fearlessness. Fearlessness does not make us brash or reckless. Of course not. Fearlessness. It's a destination. It's where you go on your ascension up the hill of the Lord, Psalm 24. And you can never leave that freedom. Why would you want to? That's the point of no return. That's the shift in this world where everything is different. Your perception of all things and the worry and the doubt and the fear, they fall away. Worthless things they are. Because now you can see, now you understand, wow, I really get who he is now. And because of that, you change just by understanding who God is. You change. That is the power of your Lord.